I freed myself, so I'm the one that filed for divorce. The fact that a preacher divorces is not a doctrine. Once a person gets married, the person is married. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're tackling a topic that can feel heavy, divorce within the Christian community. Now, before you click away, hear me out. This is a conversation filled with compassion, not judgment. Never stay in an abusive relationship. Never! The abuse was heavy. Physical abuse, all manner of... is terrible. And... I will say this one. So, in that marriage, if I don't get slapped, <laughs> let me just be on the minimal side. In nine years, maybe like six slap. Now imagine as you don't a full-grown man, like full-grown man. <laughs> Once you are abused in a marriage, it's no more marriage. It is called persecution in the Bible. You are no more in a marriage. You are in a persecution. And what did Jesus say about persecution? He said, if you're in a city where you're persecuted, flee. So if for the preaching of the gospel, which Jesus died for, he asks you to flee. Is it marriage that has no heavenly value that you will stay and die? What about the marriage? Brother Paul said, it's better to marry than to born. In 1 Corinthians, it's better to marry than to born. And he was talking to people that are already separated. So once your marriage is no more working and two of you have quitted, start looking for the person you're going to marry and have peace with. Why? Because it's better to marry somebody than to start sleeping around. Or than to stay with desire that allows too many temptations. You start jumping and jumping temptation and you're even no more organized because you are now struggling to avoid fornication, I mean, fornication, avoid adultery. You're not thinking. You can't even fulfill the purpose of God for your life. So instead of all that unnecessary battle, pick one fine sister that looks like home for you. Marry her. And serve the purpose of God. A marriage is a covenant. If you read the book of Malachi, the Bible says it's a covenant between you, your spouse, and God. The Bible says that God is a witness between thee and the wife of thy youth. But we are saying don't let religion lead you into something that God did not say. Divorce is not the same, remarriage is not the same. And that's why we're trying to help you understand that. Sometimes I wonder how people read the Bible. Don't let religion mess you up. Oh. Let's start by addressing a common misconception. Is divorce inherently a sin? Well, the answer might surprise you. Many people divorce in Christianity today because of the misinterpretation of Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality yeah. and marries another woman commits adultery. The Bible passage you just read says that if a man divorces his wife who didn't commit any sexual sin, if the man marries another, he's guilty of adultery. That's what the Bible is saying. Whoa. Whoa. So it doesn't say you should divorce. Does God hate divorce? Yes. But divorce happens within human beings. And human beings are not God. And I don't want to go into that divorce matter now. I don't want to. So that's very important today where people are even confused. What is marriage? One man, one woman, united forever, ideally. By forever, I mean as long as life lasts in this union. So here's the question. Can, can that union ever be broken uh, by divorce? Again, that's not the ideal, is it? Jesus makes that clear. In Christian circles, divorce often arises when individuals unwittingly invite negative influences into their lives. While divorce is not the desired outcome, unfortunately, it can sometimes be the result. Divorce is as a result of the hardness so if you're in an abusive marriage, it means your husband or wife, whoever is abusing the other, has hardened their heart. So in that situation, in that situation, divorce could occur. I would rather not be married than be in a marriage where I am abused emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, financially, academically, eh, traditionally. <laughs> I 
I'd rather be alone. Uh, uh, what's the benefit of marriage? Eh? When you're going home, your heart is doing boom. Boom. Say, Father, Father, help me. Father, you're going to your house. No, that's no more a house now. <laughs> you should think of house and be happy. You should, be, you should not be wanting to be anywhere other than your home. You should be in a hurry to get home. I'm always in a hurry to get home because I miss many privileges. I miss the joy of playing with my children. I miss the joy of my children touching me, scratching my head and making noise all over me. I miss the joy of my wife sitting before me and asking me and making sure I'm fine, giving me all kinds of... I miss all that. I miss the comfort of my home. I'm in a hurry to get back home quickly. And my home is full of joy. Even if there's misunderstanding, it is done in a very civilized way. Civilized. Honey, I don't like the way that happened. Oh, I'm sorry. We explain. Okay, sorry. And it's over. It's not a matter you're going home, your heart is doing characteristics of living things. Characteristics of living things. <laughs> While divorce itself is not explicitly labeled as a sin in the Bible, it's crucial to examine the context in which Jesus addressed the issue. In Matthew 19, 3 to 9, Jesus emphasized the sacredness of marriage and taught that divorce was permitted only in cases of sexual immorality. The scripture of Matthew chapter 19 verse 9 and the scripture of Mark chapter 10 verse 11 have exactly the same meaning. And the Bible in the book of Mark says anyone, mm -hmm. anyone means anyone, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And that anyone is not limited to someone whose spouse committed a sexual sin or not. Whether your spouse committed sexual sin or not, the Bible says if you divorce your spouse and marry someone else, you are committing adultery. Now, the following people are people that we know globally. Kenneth Copeland is presently mm. married to Gloria Copeland. These are fathers and mothers of the faith. Gloria Copeland is Kenneth Copeland's third wife. Mm. So if divorce is a sin, those are sinners right there. So everything they have built all their life, they have built on sin. Mm. So if you now look at Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, these are men and women of God that God has used oh, to transform they are phenomenal. life. Yes. These are, are phenomenal. our fathers and mothers yes. in the faith. Yes. And you now say they have sinned, then we are all sinners. Can you see how if there are two believers involved, these scriptures cannot see the possibility of divorce? And I don't want to go into that divorce matter now. I don't want to. I'm holding myself. The fact, the fact that a preacher divorces is not a doctrine. Looking for a biblical doctrine is not just finding a verse. Because the biblical truth is the same. It must run through the fullness of God's revelation from Genesis right through the Bible. That's how we establish biblical uh, foundations and that's how we establish the truth of the Bible. So for somebody to say this is biblical, it has to go beyond one verse is saying it. It has to be the full counsel of God. I believe it's essential to extend grace and compassion to those who have experienced divorce recognizing that each situation is unique and may involve complex factors. As Christians, we are called to love and support one another through all of life's challenges, including the pain of marital dissolution. At the same time, we must uphold the biblical standards for marriage. Divorce should never be taken lightly, and efforts toward reconciliation and restoration should always be pursued whenever feasible. As long as your stubbornness still recognizes the authority of Christ, do you understand me? You are going to journey with that woman and after a while, you will find a place of harmony. <laughs> don't, don't think that women are not someone. They have their own dimension of stubbornness. We have to balance it. <laughs> but as you journey, they hope in that adventure is that you are uniquely one in the spirit and you'll be able to achieve oneness.
in the flesh. A successful marriage does not mean a marriage without conflict. A successful marriage can be defined as a marriage where conflicts are resolved successfully. Ultimately, our understanding of divorce should be guided by the teachings of Jesus and informed by a spirit of empathy and humility. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more faith-based discussions. Until next time, may God bless you.